J Lo's new Amazon Prime documentary and musical movie has caused quite a stir over the last week, especially in the Affleck Lopez household. Once a couple 20 years ago, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez are now back together, and fans are. Ben is reportedly angry with Jennifer currently after her new movie about their love life was recently released. Insiders told The Heat that Affleck was reportedly scared that J Lo's new film, This Is Me Now, would ruin his career. And apparently, that fear has not dissipated. There is a very real risk that this film will not get the reaction she is expecting. Ben's been complaining to friends this could end up being Gigli 2.0. They said it will be especially embarrassing for him considering the career that he has built up and how seriously he takes his projects. He is scared he's made a big mistake getting involved. This is the second project they've worked on together, and since Gigli was so panned by critics, receiving a 6%. On Rotten Tomatoes and losing over $60 million at the box office, it seems as though Affleck has been worried about the same treatment and it allegedly caused problems in their marriage. Ben Affleck also recently admitted the romance forced him to make major compromises. Jennifer was really inspired by this experience, which is how artists do their work, Affleck said. They get inspired by their personal life. It moves you. I know as a writer and director, I certainly do the same things, but Things that are private, I always felt are sacred and special, in part because they are private. So, this was something of an adjustment for me. At a screening earlier this week for the documentary, Lopez said that her husband was a quote, reluctant participant in the whole thing. According to People, she told the audience during a QA session, the other scary part was that I was bringing into it my husband, who was kind of the reluctant participant and a silent participant and all. Affleck still admits his hesitancy with. Having the spotlight on their relationship. It's the first time that she's done something as an artistic form of expression that was purely for the sake of what she had to express. It was about bringing out the things she felt inside that she just wanted to say, Affleck said. And I don't really love being in the making of a documentary about my personal life, which is why I'm so relieved that it's not really. And it seems like I might be in this, but not really. I was worrying for no reason. The movie wasn't about. Me. It was about the ability to love yourself, and that love story is a lot effing harder to find than Prince Charming. Celebrity matchmaker Alessandra Conti notes that there's been a shift in how the public engages with famous couples. Navigating the complexities of fame and having a very public relationship was challenging back in the early 2000s, but now it has reached a different level. Every couple who is remotely in the public eye experiences an intense level of scrutiny. Especially with the dawn of social media, she told Fox News. However, J Lo and Ben have kept a relatively low profile when it comes to social media, and although they're supporting each other at professional events, they have kept the intimate details of their relationship private. This is a smart strategy, and as long as their privacy is maintained, it is a sustainable situation for him and J Lo. Ben also needs to understand that whoever he dates, he will be scrutinized in the public eye. This is one of the trade offs of fame. She says. In the documentary, the couple admitted they, quote, just crumbled under the pressure of being a tabloid phenomenon and it put a strain on their relationship, leading them to call off their 2003 wedding three days before it was supposed to happen. I had a very firm sense of boundaries initially around the press. Well, Jen, I don't think objected to it the way I did. I very much did object to it, Affleck said. And getting back together, I said, listen, one of the things I don't want. Is a relationship on social media. And then I realized it's not a fair thing to ask. It's sort of like if you're gonna marry a boat captain, you want to like the water. We're just two people with kind of different approaches trying to learn to compromise. J Lo is no stranger to headlines and tabloid drama, though. Let's go down memory lane and rehash some of J Lo's most shocking controversies. In 2020, Shakira and J Lo co headlined the Super Bowl halftime show, and she was accused of throwing some serious. Shade at Shakira. Lopez was seen getting into a heated debate with an NFL producer about her idea to have caged child performers on stage, a reference to the living conditions that youngsters face at border detention centers. She said, I'm trying to give you something with substance, not just us out there shaking our effing butts and effing belly dancing. I want something real. I want something that's gonna make a statement, that's gonna say that we belong here and we have something to offer.
offer. The use of the term belly dancing, something which Shakira is very famous for, left many believing that she was dismissing her co-star's contributions. Jennifer Lopez was also accused of being insensitive to her husband's addiction issues in 2023 when she launched her own brand of alcoholic cocktails. The Let's Get Loud singer put her famous name to Delola, a range of drinks created with mixologist Lynette Marrero. But having only just walked down the aisle with Ben Affleck, a recovering alcoholic, this latest business venture left a sour taste for some fans. There's also a rumor that JLo didn't used to sing on her old records. Rumors had been circulating for years that Jennifer Lopez had more than a little vocal help on hits such as Play, Ain't It Funny, and I'm Real. And in 2014, fellow R&B star Ashanti appeared to confirm that these tracks were essentially uncredited duets. Jenny from the Block is another Lopez banger whose chorus you may struggle to hear the lead artist on. In 2019, Natasha Ramos said, J-Lo did indeed go in the studio and lay down background vocals over my voice. So I wouldn't say that she's so much lip syncing. However, the backgrounds are predominantly me, some ad libs, and laughs as well. Luckily, Ramos doesn't hold a grudge against the Hollywood star, but does against her label for failing to give her proper credit. Last year on TikTok, there was a viral trend going around, fans exposing J-Lo horror stories, and some of these are shocking. One woman described the experience of helping J-Lo at Foot Locker. She said Lopez, quote, cussed me out because the store didn't have the correct size for the shoes she wanted to buy her twins. But that was nothing compared to the story another woman had after Lopez came to stay in a house where she used to work as a maid. She described how a nail artist was called in to give Lopez a pedicure in bed, which the nail tech had to do upside down because Lopez, who was laying on her stomach, refused to roll over onto her back. And if you're thinking of making eye contact with JLo, never do it. A TikToker who says that her father worked as a driver for a car company, often used by JLo, said that even a driver glancing in the rear view mirror sparked Lopez to berate him for invading her privacy. Unsurprisingly, her father eventually refused to drive Jennifer ever again. JLo's new Amazon Prime movies aren't getting the best hype as some say it is the worst movie ever made. One reviewer made a list called the reasons why this sucked. I had no idea what was going on in the movie, she says. There was no theme, actually. There were too many themes. There were so many talented artists in the movie who were used more as props. They should have had a bigger role. She goes on to say, this movie seems like an ode to herself for nailing down a man, Ben Affleck. It's not really about love. This is a movie about conquering a man. She's basically telling everybody that the other relationships that her and Ben had were just filler until they could be together again. Her kids and Ben kids are going to be watching this. Do they really need to know how much she loves sleeping with their dad? We all know it's not her voice singing those songs and then she continues by saying, and if it is, auto-tune should get a lot of the credit. She is narcissistic, over the top, and way too in love with herself. For people clicking more than two stars, did you actually watch it or are you just clicking on five stars because you love this ego maniac? Yikes. All right, back to Ben and Jennifer. More inside details of their private life were released in her accompanying documentary that was just released this past week. Early in the documentary, Lopez reveals that she showed her musical collaborators a collection of letters that Affleck gave to her as a gift. This book is a book that Ben gave me on our first Christmas back together. It's every letter and email that we wrote to each other from 20 years ago and today, she says. The cover of the thick binder says, handwritten, the greatest love story never told by Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck, 2001 to 2022 and counting. Jennifer explains, it became like our Bible and we just left it there in the studio. Ben Affleck, however, was surprised their correspondences were made public. I was like, you've been showing all the musicians all these letters? And they were like, yeah, we call you Pen Affleck, he recalls in the documentary. I did really find the beauty and the poetry and the irony in the fact that it's the greatest love story never told. And if you're making a record, about it, that seems kind of like you're telling it. He adds later that he had to adjust to the change. But things that are private, I've always felt are sacred and special because they're private. So this was something of an adjustment for me. At number 10, we have seven limousines. Starting off strong with her gigantic and expensive entourage to walk three city blocks. 
Apparently, she was staying at the Metropolitan when she decided to walk to the Dorchester restaurant, which was three blocks away. Instead of having her personalized bodyguards or a small group of people to keep her safe, she insisted she hire seven limos so she could travel the 200 yards from point A to point B without being bothered. Afterwards, she claimed that exercise and working out is something that makes her the happiest in life. Like walking 200 yards with a full entourage is truly exercising. The entire situation is so bizarre and out of touch, you can't help but recognize it as diva behavior. At number nine, we have how she got someone fired for asking for an autograph. A hotel maid asked her for an autograph, which is totally respectful because she's literally Jennifer Lopez. But it was how she responded that made her such a diva. When the maid asked her very politely for an autograph, nothing came of it. But a day later, the maid received a phone call from the cleaning company she was employed with to let her know that Jen complained about it and she was fired from that point on. What makes the situation worse is that the hotel tried to deny it happening to maintain its image. Not only is it shady, but the maid risked it all for little reward. Who would think that Jenny from the block would be such a princess about a fan? At number eight, we have the diamond encrusted headphones. It makes sense to have sound canceling headphones with you, especially when you have sensitive ears. But when they're entirely diamond encrusted and worth almost $6,000, it's too much. One of the more infamous moments she wore the headphones was when she was showing up to the World Music Awards on her personal speedboat. And it wasn't just personalized to her, it was completely custom made with custom love seats that were faux leather and champagne coolers. But because the boat on the water was just too loud, she had the noise canceling headphones. And like I mentioned before, they were entirely diamond encrusted. Like regular headphones just weren't enough. At number seven, we have how she won't respond to her flight attendant. She has her own private jet with her own personal flight attendants, and she wouldn't even make a conversation with them. It was in 2012 when she was in hot water for it because one of her flight attendants came forward saying that she was ghosting her. The attendant in question came up to her and a few of her guests and asked if she wanted anything to drink. Jen looked at her, turned her head away from her, and told her personal assistant to tell the attendant that she would like a Diet Coke with a lime. Obviously, this is jaw-dropping behavior for anyone, even if it is on par for Jen. At number six, we have $20 million to be a judge. While she was one of the hosts on American Idol, she was charging $20 million a season. And to add to it, she even bought out Simon Cowell for $12 million so she could replace him. And to prove how much of a diva she really is, her appearance alone rejuvenated the show. So they were willing to cough up the big bucks just to keep her. She wouldn't just judge people on their talent though, she would often judge people on how they smelled. But according to her, at least she didn't judge people on how they looked. Like that's any better. At number five, we have how the construction crew was not allowed to make eye contact with her. It makes sense when one person's staring too aggressively or with weird intentions. But when it's a huge group of people, it's a little excessive, even for human behavior. She'd hired a crew to refurbish her mansion home, and if she was around them, they were not allowed to make eye contact with her, and they weren't allowed to speak to her at all either. But that's not all. A lot of her previous helpers said the same thing, like her drivers and other caretakers. She actually ended up selling that home for $27 million and bought a new one the same year for $40 million. At number four, we have how she wouldn't shoot a commercial where she grew up. We know from her song, Jenny from the Block, that she grew up rough, and she makes it a point to share her story of triumph and overcoming the odds. But when she refused to film in the Bronx, people were taken aback. She makes it a point to seem like she still has strong connections to her roots there, but refuses to film there. It could definitely be for her own safety, but if she was so deeply connected, you would think she'd want to go back. She was actually filming a Fiat commercial and they wanted to tap into that part of her, but she would only film in LA and they required a body double to film the scenes that were in the Bronx. I suppose no matter how deep your roots go, fame overcomes that. At number three, we have her very specific food demands. We know that the diva makes very specific demands and that doesn't stop when it comes to food or drink. When she was touring back in 2010, she required a completely white room with top to bottom furniture and everything all in white. 
She also required no catering in the actual room aside from the drinks, which included, but were not limited to, room temperature refrigerated Gatorade, Coca-Cola regular and diet, a lemon wedge with smart water specifically, fruit punch, and plain M&Ms. If they weren't plain, she'd freak out. Also, if she was going to receive a piece of apple pie, it had to be a la mode, or else she'd flip her lid as well. As if it wasn't hard enough to keep her happy, any food catering was to be left outside the door by the person bringing it. Another insane food demand occurs is that when she orders breakfast at a hotel, it needs to be piping hot no matter when she arrives or when it arrives to her room. And if it's not, she'll throw a fit. But it's not just a regular order either. It's scrambled eggs, bacon, pancakes, and the rest of the nine yards. At number two, we have her specific relationship requests. If you wanna be with her, you've gotta jump through hoops to prove you're worth the position. When she was still with Alex Rodriguez, she claimed she really loved his physique. But if he ever lost it or let himself go, she wouldn't be able to stay with him because that was a deal breaker and she wouldn't marry him if it wasn't a guarantee that he would remain his shape. And that's not all. She also said that if they were going to be together, he was banned from speaking to any woman under the age of 40 in case he tried to get any ideas. She was 49 at that time, and him having a conversation with someone younger than her made her jealous and uncomfortable. And last but not least at number one, we have how she claims she isn't a diva. You know you've become fully out of touch when you do everything on this list and still claim you aren't a diva. She says she doesn't deserve the title of being a diva because she doesn't feel like she is, which makes next to no sense. But her support for that claim is that she worked very hard to get where she is and that she's still a hardworking person. Because a hardworking person absolutely can't be a diva. With her private jet and her seven limos and her diamond encrusted headphones. Getting somewhere big in life when you come from nothing is a big deal and it's really inspiring to young and upcoming artists. But when you've become that desensitized to your lavish lifestyle, maybe it's time to do some proper soul searching. Number 10, Mariah Carey. This celebrity feud is legendary, so it's only fair that we start off with this one. JLo and Mariah Carey have been at each other's throats since the early 2000s. In fact, most people remember the iconic line that Mariah told a German reporter, I don't know her. Although it sounds hilarious, Mariah has maintained her negative opinion of JLo all these years. For example, an interviewer once asked her what she thought about Beyonce and Jennifer Lopez, and she responded by saying that they don't even belong in the same category for a very specific reason. Well, it's hard. You can't really put those two people in the same category because one is in a really different generation. They just started singing later. But when you talk about Beyonce, I think she's wonderful. She's great. She's a talented person. But it seemed that she forgot to compliment JLo as well. A few years later, Carrie spoke to Andy Cohen and doubled down on her comments. Quote, I don't know her. What am I supposed to say? It looks like it'll take a miracle for these two iconic performers to ever be on good terms. Number nine, Rihanna. There are several celebrities who can't stand Jennifer Lopez, but one of the biggest critics of the iconic singer is Rihanna. These two former best friends had a serious falling out in 2016 for the oldest reason in the book. They were fighting over the same guy. Before the feud began, Rihanna and JLo were friendly to each other and had no reason for animosity. But trouble started brewing right after Rihanna and Drake broke up. They had had a summer fling that same year which was pretty casual but it definitely still counted. Girl code was broken when JLo started getting close with Drake almost immediately after. But the feud really became public when Jennifer posted a photo of her and Drake hanging out backstage at her show in Las Vegas with the caption hashtag love him. In fact the two were even spotted hugging and fans quickly realized that something very shady was happening. An inside source close to the star said that Riri felt like she had suffered the ultimate betrayal and called Jennifer's behavior desperate. It must have been accurate because in December of 2016, she suddenly unfollowed Lopez on Instagram. Number eight, Gloria Estefan. Cuban American superstar Gloria Estefan was originally supposed to be performing at the 2020 Super Bowl alongside fellow Latina pop stars JLo and Shakira. But after seeing JLo's new documentary called Halftime, where the singer went on a rant about having to share the stage with Shakira, Gloria put her comments on blast. She didn't seem to agree that it was the worst idea 
Sofia ever to have the artist share the stage and explained why Lopez got it wrong on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. Quote, look, this is the bottom line. You have very little time, like 12 minutes or something, to get things on and off the set. So could you do it with one person? Yes. But I think they wanted to throw a Miami and Latin extravaganza and they tried to pack it in as much as possible. The Grammy Award winner also confirmed that she chose not to participate for a reason, seeing as JLo got so worked up about having two people perform. Quote, okay, and imagine what JLo would have said if I was the third. I literally would come out, Donna, shake your booty and out. But she went on to insist that it was their moment and that she didn't want to go on a diet in December anyway. Number seven, Nick Cannon. The Wild and Out star took a cue from his ex-wife Mariah Carey's famous phrase to throw shade at Jennifer Lopez during his guest appearance on The Wendy Williams Show. While discussing Hollywood crushes during the Hot Topic segment, the 41-year-old first first name Carey, his ex-wife, and mother to their two twins, Moroccan and Monroe. Quote, number one, Mariah, the amazing mother, superstar, singer. He then went on to name Halle Berry and Naomi Campbell as his second and third choices. A producer then suggested JLo as an option and he just responded with, I don't know her. After the audience erupted into laughter, the host added, that was a joke for the lambs. Shout out to the lambs. As Carey refers to her fans as the lamily. Cannon made it clear who he supports in the ongoing Battle of the Divas and naturally he sided with Carrie, so we can't really fault him for that. It's been a bit of a running joke for years that Mariah wasn't kidding and didn't actually know JLo personally when she gave that interview, but it was too late to clear the air as the classic I don't know her line has gone down in history as one of the best ways to shade someone. Number 6 Rosie Perez Both Jennifer Lopez and Rosie Perez have served as inspirations to the Latin community for over two decades, but they haven't always gotten along. They met back in 1991 during an open casting call for In Living Color. At the time, Perez was the show's choreographer, and Lopez was auditioning to become a member of the dance troupe known as the Fly Girls. Her, her audition was unsuccessful, but Perez saw a star quality in JLo and actually pulled some strings to get her in. But after she was in the group, it became clear that Lopez didn't get along with her fellow dancers. According to Perez, she was labeled as a diva right away. All of the girls were coming into my office and complaining how she was manipulating wardrobe, makeup, and me, all to her advantage. Perez said that at first she didn't believe it, but then JLo screamed at her saying, I know I'm good, I'm better than any of these girls and you know it. What's worse is, after JLo left the show and made it big in the music industry, she went on talk shows trashing her former choreographer. Perez also implied that JLo ghosted her. Quote, I called her up, she wouldn't pick up. Frustrated, I left her an irate message on her answering machine. Instead of calling me back and hashing it out like friends do, she went on a major talk show and reiterated my lashing. Number five, Brandy. Brandy has had a public feud with Jennifer Lopez since 2017. And according to Kiwi Report, she made made it clear that she supports Mariah Carey going against JLo too. Basically, she posted a photo of herself on Instagram hugging Carey with the hashtag she knows me. The caption was super perfect and a great reference to that famous I don't know her comment. So the whole thing tells us that Brandy is totally teaming with Mariah. Brandy's post exploded on social media and Lopez fans immediately took offense to it. Mariah saw the backlash and chimed in to Brandy's photo commenting with a simple I sure do. But the singer was quick to defend herself from hate comments and edited the caption shortly after posting it with quote, oh my god, what happened? I swear to goodness, I don't know what the fuss is about. I love this pic and now everyone thinks I'm throwing shade. At who? This is funny, can't take this one down. I love this picture and whenever I'm throwing shade, it's not questionable. You know that I am. She totally doubled down on dissing Jennifer and siding with Mariah, adding quote, also, I've met her several times. Like the several seats that should be taken, she does know me. Number four, Nicki Minaj. These two have allegedly been feuding since 2012. It all started when Nicki was performing one particular 
It all started when Nikki was performing on one particular episode of American Idol at the same time that JLo was sitting on the judge panel. In a rather awkward moment, Nikki asked if she could come back on the show as a guest judge and asked JLo to scoot over. As a Latina artist hit back, she said, I don't know if there's room for both of us. It was one of those joking moments that seemed like there was something else behind it, but nevertheless, the two seemed to be just joking around. Even though Nikki told a reporter backstage, quote, she didn't seem to be having it, but she's gonna have it. Okay, so now we're jumping to 2015, when fans swear that Nikki shaded JLo for performing her song at the American Music Awards. As she was performing a small part of Anaconda, the camera cut to Nikki in the audience, looking less than happy with the rendition. The clip showed her emotionless face and made it seem like she didn't approve of the way her song was being used. Number three, Ryan Seacrest. This incident gives Ryan every reason to hate JLo because it's pretty bad. Ryan Seacrest worked alongside the singer on American Idol and the two quickly became friends. But all that seemingly changed when the talk show host revealed that he flew down to Miami to celebrate her milestone 50th birthday, only to be denied entry at the door. Ouch. He recalled the whole story on Live with Kelly and Ryan and explained that he flew down from New York for only a few hours because he had to make it back in time for the next morning show. But when he finally arrived, the doorman told him, you're not on the list, to which he responded, clearly there's a mistake. She invited me personally. But upon being denied, he checked the list and couldn't find his name. The doorman just asked him to wait, made a quick call and was able to confirm that Seacrest was indeed on the guest list. But the host went on to say that he he was the first person there and no one really got turned up until after he left. It would have certainly been a little embarrassing to say in the least. Number two, Cameron Diaz. Throughout the years, Jennifer Lopez has been known to speak negatively about her fellow actors and it looks like it may have come back to bite her. During an interview in the late 90s, JLo explained that Cameron Diaz was just a lucky model who was given opportunities. She did mention that Diaz can be good when directed, but Lopez's past comments about Cameron's career allegedly made things super awkward between them. When they were when they both had to buckle down and work together in the 2012 comedy, What to Expect When You're Expecting. Several anonymous sources on the set of the film claim that the two stars did not get along at all during the shoot. In fact, it was reported that Cameron said the singer was a nightmare to work with. Quote, she even said that Jen should stick to her day job, meeting American Idol and singing. According to the insider, JLo demanded to eat at specific times, no matter what, and stops working when it suits her. And she had her assistant run over to her with food. This is what allegedly drove Cameron crazy. Another source claimed that the co-stars actively avoided one another while filming and tensions were thick. Number one, Ojani Noah. The former couple were married on February 22nd, 1997 and got divorced barely one year later, in January of 1998. It was so long ago that you would think Ojani has moved on from the relationship, but apparently he's still holding on to a bit of resentment. In fact, Jennifer's former flame was out to make a buck off their brief marriage by trying to expose revealing videos from their honeymoon. Ajani was even hauled into court after he started planning a tell-all movie based on the revealing home footage called How I Married Jennifer Lopez, The JLo and Ojani Noah Story. The result? Well, she sued him for a whopping $10 million and demanded a permanent court order blocking her ex from making any videos public. Ajani also threatened to write a tell-all book unless he was paid $5 million by the singer. His unpublished book alleges that JLo had multiple affairs, including one with Mark Anthony, during the 11 months that they were married. But a judge was not having it and awarded her $545,000 in damages and quashed the book, ruling that it violated a 2004 deal not to publish details of their relationship. Her team calls the movie an outrageous attempt to make money and received substantial compensation. So it's clear that he's still a little bit bitter. 